So recently, we have just discovered a very interesting new attack. So in this video, I'm going to describe how the attack works. OK, so first, now if you see something like this, there's a barcode posted on the wall. And if you scan it, then you can win an iPad. And do you scan that or not? That depends, actually. So if you use a native app, like the app in Android written in Java, and you are fine, you can scan that. But if you are using an app which is written in the HTML5 technology, and then you should be careful. So, so what's going to happen? Now if you scan that, okay, this is what you're going to see from this barcode. Okay, and there's some data in the barcode. So if you scan that, you're going to see some of the links. Okay, and you can see that you can see a button. Okay, so that's very very normal. It does not seem there's anything wrong in here. Okay, but this is what your app says in that two D barcode. So in addition to this information, which is the information that your app displays, those are links and the, the buttons. But in addition to that, there's a piece of code embedded. Okay, so this is the code that is embedded in that 2D barcode. Unfortunately, your app, if it's written in the HTML5 technology, it may not display the code. It may just simply execute the code. So when the code is executed, and you will be in trouble. This is a trouble that we're going to get into. So in that app, in that code, what we actually did is we actually keep tracking your locations. So once you have scanned the 2D barcode, now if you just walk around your, your neighborhood, and we are going to see where you are. So every 10 seconds, and your app is going to actually tell us where the location is. This is all because the code that we injected in the 2D barcode. So if you just use a native app, native app means the app that is written in the native program language. For example, in Android, the native program language is Java. In iPhone, the native program language is Object C. So if your app is written in those languages, and this is pretty much what you're going to see, okay? And the code is going to be actually just displayed and not actually executed. So that is why it is safe if your app is written in the native technology. But if it's written in the HTML5 technology, and the code is going to be executed if you use the wrong way to display those information. In the previous example, we only show you how the attacker can launch attacks against you using the 2D barcode. And in our research, we actually conduct a very systematic study to look at all the possible channels that attacker can use to inject code into your devices. And so these are some of the examples. For example, if you are in the airport and you want to scan Wi-Fi access point, the name of that Wi-Fi access point can be used as a channel to inject the code. Okay, so by simply scanning the Wi-Fi access point, and you can be attacked. If you pair with Bluetooth devices, the same thing, you're going to display the name of the Bluetooth that you found. And we can actually put the code in the name field. And so by displaying the names, and you can get a piece of malicious code into your device. Okay. Similarly, NFC, if you read from NFC, or if you read from 2D barcode, and or if you just read SMM message and send to you by somebody. And some of the device, they can even receive FM radio. And so in these days, in the FM radio, and some of the data is actually encoded in the FM radio. So for example, if you are listening to a music, and the name of that music is actually embedded in the FM signal. So if your app try to display that, we can put the malicious code inside of those fields. So if your app trying to display those information, and those malicious code can be get into your devices. 
MP3. Okay, you play MP3, and we know the MP3 have a lot of this metadata field, and that's the perfect place for us to put the malicious code. So if you're ever trying to display those metadata field, for example, the album names, the artist names, sometimes you have a lyrics inside of an MP3 file. So the, the code can be put in those fields. So if you are trying to display them using the ATM5 based apps, and you could get into trouble. And the picture is similar, and JPEG has metadata field. Let me just use a Wi-Fi access point to show you how the attack works. So we actually set up a Wi-Fi access point and using our own smartphone, okay? And so this Wi-Fi access point is going to broadcast to the neighborhood or telling them, and this is my, my name, if you want to get connected, and you can select that. So here's the Wi-Fi analyzer, which is written in the native program language. So that one is safe. So when this trying to display the access point name found it and in the neighborhood, and everything's going to be displayed, including the one that we wrote. And you can see this is not a typical name, and this is actually a code that we put in here. Okay, so, but this app is safe, so it doesn't run the code, it's only display whatever they see. Unfortunately, this one is HTML5 based app, okay, and this one, when it tries to display that information, and then the code get triggered, and that's where this attack was displayed. So that was the what what the code does. Just simply, actually, a pop up window that shows you and the attack message. Okay, so of course we didn't do anything malicious here, but it just show you that code now can be triggered by simply scan the Wi-Fi access point. We do have a challenge that we face. Wi-Fi access point ID field has only thirty two bytes. And that is not enough for us to inject malicious code, meaningful malicious code that can do damage. It can do a pop-up window, and that's fine. But if you want to do a real damage, and 32 bytes is not long enough. So the question is, how can attacker overcome this limitation? Is it possible to overcome this limitation? And we have to find a way to overcome this limitation. So now, Instead of using one Wi-Fi access point, and we use multiple, in this case, we use one, two. If, if you look at their name, their name all look weird, okay? Because those are the code that we injected. But each one only contains one piece of a code. So this one contains this piece, this one contains this piece, the one piece here, so we actually, uh, assign a full piece of our code into this full variable, and then at the end of this, we put them together. We use A plus B plus C plus D, and then we use eval, and eval will trigger the result of this concatenation. So, and by using five access points, now we can inject a code which is longer than 32 bytes. And so that's the first thing we tried, and it works. And then later we realized we really don't need actual five access point. We just need one access point, just one, com one. We just need one smartphone. But for every five second, it changes its name. So still, it has to send five pieces. But all these five pieces are sent from one computer, one smartphone. It just every five second, it changes the name. If you're scanning the Wi-Fi access point, you're going to get all these five access points. Okay? And once you get all the five pieces of our malicious code, and, and they will be assembled into one and then get executed. And that's where the problem can happen. So how exactly does this work? Okay? So in this picture, I'm ex trying to explain to you how the attack works. Okay? So whenever you are trying to access some of the external resources here, okay, whether it's Wi-Fi, NFC, MP3, and those are the data that came from outside world, and they are untrusted. And typically, what we think is, and they just contain data, right? So data, what is the danger of those things? So if you use a native program 
language like Java, Object C, and sometimes you're fine with that. You just get the data, display them, and there's not much risk there. Okay, but if this app is written in the HTML5 based technology, okay, and for example, a typical framework is PhoneGap. PhoneGap is actually the most popular framework to use to develop HTML5 based app. So in this case, now the attacker can put the code inside the payload. So in the payload, there's a data and there's code. So and this whole thing will come into this through the PhoneGap plugin. So that's the PhoneGap platform. And that's how the data will get into your app. Okay. So now once it's in the app, if you want to display them, okay, if you say, okay, I, I need to display the code. Now, this is where the problem can happen. So, if you use a safe API to display the code, if you use a safe API to display everything, and then both the data and the code, they will go down to here, okay? If the API that you are using is safe, and they'll go down to the render engine, and that means both data and code will be displayed, and you are safe. But if you use an API that is not safe, for example, if you use this API to display the payload, and then this API is more intelligent. It can look into your payload. It find out that you do have a code inside your payload. So it send the data this way, and then send the code actually into the JavaScript engine. That's where the code can be triggered. Once the code is triggered, this code has exactly the same privilege as the code that actually belong to this app. So now, whatever this app can do, and this injected code can do that same thing. So for example, if this app can dial phone number, then this injected code can also dial the phone numbers. So essentially, this injected code can use all the API provided, okay, and by the HTML5 API and all the API provided by those plugins and then just depends on what permission that this app has then it can do the damage and so that's exactly how it works so we have described this attack in full details in our papers if you're interested in that and you can read our paper the paper is also posted on in our website